Hey there, so it's another sunny March morning. It's almost 50 degrees again. Uh, I'm on the road a little bit later than what I had originally planned. But yesterday I walked four miles plus in neoprene waders. Um, and honestly, I'm a, I'm a little, little worn out. So the place that I was going to go this time of year, it's primarily a great trout stream as well. And I decided, you know what? I don't want to do trout today. Um, and I just, I, I don't want to put in those miles because tomorrow I'm going to repeat that again on a different stream. Uh, so we'll see how that turns out. But the other reason I'm off to a little bit of a later start is that I was working on the video from yesterday. And so I first broke trout, first time fly fishing. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. So today I'm headed to one of my old favorites. So like this is a place that I used to fish in the 90s, back before I gave up fishing for my corporate career, right? It's, uh, you know, basically I used to go out two or three days a week, five days a week, sort of like I'm doing now. So I'm gonna, um, I still got about another 45 minutes, I think, drive. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna take my time, enjoy the weather, enjoy the drive, get there, uh, and then I'll see you on the edge of the water. So, down here on the creek, and I was actually a little worried on my way in because when I when I saw the river, I mean there was just stuff floating all through the river. But here, the water's nice and, and calm. It's green, um, which is a good thing. That's normally what it looks like. So, we're gonna try our luck today. Take a little um, easy, basically do a little bit of bank fishing, and I may move around a little bit just seeing if we can find the fish. But a lot of times. The fish that I'm after, which you know could be smallmouth, uh, walleye, drum, maybe even some catfish, the kind of fish that I'm after in this creek are typically on the move. Um, this section is is not where they would typically hang out. They should be on their move to get to shallower, warmer water. The walleye may be coming in to spawn. In fact, I've caught my personal best walleye uh, in this creek. Uh, right around this location, about 27 inches. So, um, so we're just going to get to it, and we'll see how the day goes. Okay, we got our first fish here. Didn't have the camera running because it's been a little on the slow side. But he's really wrapping around. It. I'm wondering if this is a catfish, maybe. But I feel him wrapping around. Do, 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 do. Ah, I can get this guy, I think. Yeah, I felt you wrapping up in that line. Come here. Now I can tell you're all tangled up. So, fish number one of the day is this channel cat, but man, he's more yellow than I've ever seen before. So, and uh, hit it pretty hard. So, I'm going to double check to see if this is a channel cat or if it's something else, but like I said, it's just really yellow. So, it's off to at least getting a start. Get out of here. That last fish was funny because I could feel him wrapping up in the line. And essentially what I fish with and when I'm bottom fishing most of the time, something like a drop shot. I've done this since I was growing up in the 80s. 
uh, and it's essentially just it has the weight on the bottom and my theory was always that I kept the bait up off the bottom a little bit so the fish could find it but also they didn't feel the weight that much so so fish number one in the books at least we didn't get skunked <laughs> I don't know if you can see my line there, but I typically like to leave just a little bit of slack in my line. And that way the fish also gets a chance to sort of take it a little bit. And then when you see the line move, you know that they're, you know, something they're nibbling, playing around. And then typically it gives them a chance to run a little bit without any resistance. You can typically get a pretty nice hook set. And because of the way I have it rigged, they usually don't get it very deep either. So it's, I usually get, the, you know, somewhere around the, the outside of the mouth hook set. So it's worked for me over the years and uh, just something I'm using again. Okay, so I just had a hit. He's still there. I can see him messing with the line. Here he goes. Oh! Missed it. Unfortunately, I was too excited. A little bit too excited. I thought it, I thought it, <laughs> I anticipated a big run. But you know, he got a good bit of my bait. Uh, anyway, that is the challenge. We'll get it back out there and try again. There's definitely some fish in here that are feeding, which is awesome. Actually, this is only my second time fishing with this particular setup. I came across this uh, Fenwick HMG spinning rod, and I put this Pissifun or P PC Fun Carbon X 2000 reel with it, uh, and that catfish was the first one that uh, that I caught on. And I tell you what, I mean it it felt really good. You know, hopefully we catch a few more. Disappointed I missed that one. Uh, he'd been out there for a while, and but hopefully we will get the next one. I don't know why that rooster's still crowing. I mean, it's 11 o'clock in the morning. He's a late rooster. Something pulled the slack out of my line, and there was a, just a little tick. So I don't know if it's anything big enough to fool with. We'll see you here in a minute. Another thing I remember about this spot is that I used to have to fight the ducks and stuff, and there's a... Uh, there's been a few ducks and some geese down that way, but uh, they're not too bad today. So just in case there might be something that's uh, just wanting something a little more towards the top. We'll just throw that out there. It's a Ned Rig jig because that's my Ned Rig setup. A little float, maybe about 18 inches up, and just some night crawler. So, We'll just let that float out there too and see what happens. I don't know if hopefully the video picks it up, but you can see what I believe are the, the first hatch of stone flies just going through the, the wind here. And uh, that's a good sign for the trout fishermen who, especially those who like dry flies. With all these little bugs and everything, it means that a lot of the a lot of fish should be eaten up as well. So it, that's a that's a really, really good sign. Happy Spring is, is on its way. Just had a little bit of movement on my line. Not sure if it was a combination of wind and a little bit of debris or if it's the beginning of a fish being there. So find out here in a minute or so. Hopefully not even a minute. Then again, could be nothing. I'm actually starting to think that it uh, would have been better to get here a little earlier in the morning because as the sun comes up, less and less of the water is shaded. On the plus side, that'll heat it up a little bit more, but uh, on the downside, I would guess that a lot of the active fish are probably clear on that other side that you can't quite cast to. That's actually the deeper part of the channel out there. We'll hit that with the canoe sometime, but if this fish decides to come back, I will, uh, or if any fish decides to come along, I'll fire the video back up.
No one. Come on, just take it. You got it. Come on, commit. Ah! That was acting like a small catfish, so. Okay, a lot of slack got locked, knocked in my line here. It's usually a sign that there's a fish out there, but it still just keeps going slack, so I'm gonna try something. Oh, there was something there. Yeah, let's just go ahead and go for it. Pretty much wraps it up. A couple more boats coming up, but I think I'm done. I may hit uh, one more lake, but if not, you won't see that in this video. Um, it's just nice being out here. So, caught one catfish, decent sized one, and uh, that I'll see you next time.